Welcome everybody, glad you could make it today. Um, before we get started, I wanted to take you over to uh, the Digital Art Academy website. And uh, just as a reminder, our, our classes are closed right now and we will be reopening on January 1st with brand new courses, brand new site and a brand new school. Uh, so be looking for that. But if you want to follow along with me today, come on over to Digital Art Academy, go to the brush shop on the menu item here, and go ahead and download the Mountains Majesty Paper Library. And it's free, there's no charge, just click on it, download it, and you'll be able to follow along with me. Um, also, you'll find another brush category here called the KB Pastels Gold Brush Category. And that one is, uh, there's a couple of brushes that I will be using out of that pack today, so you're free to uh, take advantage of that. And of course, there is one more uh, brush uh, or paper library here for you too. Um, and this is also another paper library that works in conjunction with the with the uh, KB Pastels. So if you'd like to download that. But today we'll be using the Mountains Majesty Library, okay? So get on over there and get that. So I wanted to uh, start out today um, with some of the ways uh, that you can work with the Mountain Majesty's uh, paper library. There's something about texture when you're working with um, painter that's so exciting and adds um, a lot of dimension and quality to your work. Um, it keeps it from looking flat. It gives you that feeling of shape, um, dark values, light values. Uh, and it's one of the ways that I absolutely love to work in painter. Um, if I can't use texture in some way from uh, an overlay a beautiful painted overlay to paper textures. I'm I'm just not happy. So I'm always looking for ways to create texture uh, when I'm working with painter. And I just wanted to start off by showing you a couple of examples, a few examples of how this Mad, uh, Mountains Majesty uh, paper library can evoke that feeling of. Uh, rocks and texture. You can use it for tree trunks, you can use it for rocks, for mountains, for the, the look of ice on the top of a lake. So there's many, many ways as long as you're open to that creativity uh, going forward. So let me show you uh, some of these paintings. And we'll just start off with a few here. This is, uh, again, just done with um, the paper library, Mountain's Majesty, and working with some of the beautiful ways that you can create texture uh, in your paintings. And I'm going to close these as I go along here, so um, you'll be able to. I don't have too much open at one time here. This one uh, I think is one of my favorites. It's the uh, more of a Bob Ross style, um, but I used this paper library, Mountains Majesty again, along with uh, some of the pastel gold uh, brushes to create that really rocky uh, mountain look. Um, and this is just one of my favorites here. I really liked painting this one, it was fun. Uh, let's go to another here. This one is Forest Freeze, and this one is more, not so much about uh, the snow effect, mountain effect, but more of just creating texture with using different brushes and that paper library right along with it. So I'm going to move the paper library over here so we can see it. And, uh, you know, I just was looking for a lot of different ideas of texture and I worked into it with certain brushes just to to get that feeling of the rocky cliffs and textures going along the uh, edges here. Um, this one is late fall. This one actually I did last night. I was just playing around with it and uh, again you can see that I use different brushes but all along the edges here uh, of the shoreline, I use the Mountain Majesties to create that feeling of 
you know, just maybe some new fallen snow, some ice starting to form on the water, um, just to evoke that uh, texture effect. And let's see. Now this was the the uh, image that I first started when I created these brushes. I started, uh, or I'm sorry, these uh, paper textures. This is the first mountain scene that I did with them. And I just really had fun experimenting and creating those uh, mountains. They're so full of uh, crevices and cracks. And it just did a great job with, with very easy, as you're going to see, to do this uh, just with some simple tricks that I'll show you. And I'll show you one more here before I finish off. Uh, here's another one, uh, just a mountain scene where I use the same paper library to create that uh, feeling of, of mountains and the um, cracks and crevices of the mountains. So let me just show you right now the tricks and tips for getting started with Mountains Majesty and uh, some of the brushes that I used along with this. Now, as I go through uh, some of these brushes that I'm going to use here, um, I'll let you know where you can get some of these brushes because some of these are actually in app in the Corel uh, brush store. So you'll be able to, to pick those up if you like those brushes. The first one I'm going to start off with, uh, we're going to just start with a pastel blender here. And um, I'm going to add a new layer and work directly above this so I can show you the ways to get started with uh, Mountain's Majesty. Now, there's a direct relationship between the contrast, the scale, and the brightness of these uh, paper textures in, in the ways that you're going to be creating those looks of uh, cracks and crevices in the mountains. And you have to be willing to let go of some of the control that you normally have with uh, other brushes. So there's a randomness that's going to occur as you start to develop your mountains. And you have to kind of let that go and follow it and uh, take advantage of some of the, what we call happy accidents that happen as you start to build um, on your mountain scene. So the first brush I'll start off with is this one called the Thick Paint Mountains here. And what you're going to be doing as you start to work here, you'll notice that I keep the scale very low at 25%. That doesn't mean that you can't bring it up and work with bigger scale. But I personally, uh, when I start to develop the mountain scene here, I start to work uh, more on a small scale at 25%. And then I'm working with contrast and brightness consistently. And then I'm also changing the angle of that uh, pattern of that paper texture. So I'm creating that randomness. On top of that, you'll also want to have your grain uh, panel open, which uh, I think by default it's attached to this. But if it isn't, you'll just uh, go to the um, window menu, uh, go to brush controls, uh, brush controls, go down to media, and the very first option here is grain, and that will bring up your grain panel. Because what you want to do here is make sure that you have random grain rotation set. So that means as I lay down a brush stroke, I'm going to be getting different patterns coming out based upon that particular paper that I'm using. So it's not going to be a consistent pattern. It's going to be uh, different. You're going to get a different pattern every time you lay down a brush stroke. So I'm going to back up just a little bit here and go to this one called sandpaper. And we're going to use this to just create the first brush strokes for our uh, mountains. So I can show you how to get started with these. So I'm going to all, I tend to start with darker colors. I'm using a uh, Bob Ross palette here. 
that I just like using. Um, for the most part, it really fits some of the color schemes that I'm going to be using. And then I also have my harmony panel open. And with that said, I'm able to work within different value ranges of a particular color that I've chosen, okay? So it gives me a good start to get going with here. So I'm gonna start off with a pretty big brush stroke and we're gonna do something just really uh, very simple here. We'll make sure that our reset is up to 100% on the brush and uh, that should be uh, set to um, default on that brush if you're using it. And we're just, I'm just gonna start off by laying in some simple brush strokes here. And we're, I'm really kind of doing this in the kind of the Bob Ross style here where we just did these, you know, big mountain shapes. And it's not gonna look like much here until we get going. So we'll just get in some basic shapes here. If I put a little firmer pressure on this brush, <clears throat> you can see that I'm getting a little bit darker value coming through. So right now I'll start thinking about uh, light source. So I'll have my darker part of the mountain over on the right hand side and the lighter part of the mountain, uh, I'll just let come over to the left hand side. Little bit smaller brush stroke. We'll do something back here in the distance as well. Okay, so just very, very simple start. And Tanya, if there's any questions, um, feel free to jump in, not a problem. Everybody is very quiet so far. They're just looking. I sent them the link to the papers and brushes. Cool. Great. All right, so we get we get in something very simple like this. I'm setting up my light coming from the left hand side. The dark part of the mountains will be on the left hand or the right hand side. Now I'm going to make the brush a little larger here and I'm going to take the reset down to 0% and I'm going to start doing a little bit of soft blending here, very soft pressure. And by the way, um, this question comes up a lot uh, during these webinars. I know uh, what are you using, you know, what kind of pen um, are you using a Cintiq, you know, what are you using? I don't use a Cintiq, I use the uh, Wacom Pro. I have forever, um, it's what I like to use. And um, I use the art pen, the 360 degree rotation. And if you don't use an art pen, uh, it's one of those things that I, I don't do this very often, but boy, if you have an opportunity to get an art pen, you really should because it, in working in painter, it gives you that opportunity. As you can see my brush turning here, I get 360 degree rotation with a brush and many of these brushes in the size option, I have that ability to uh, set that angle range to rotation. Uh, and I never, I don't usually go over four degrees on the rotation on the angle step. That's my happy place with uh, working with rotation. But if you don't have an art pen, just simply set this to bearing instead of rotation and you'll still get a, a really nice uh, brush stroke. So don't worry about it. You know, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not something you have to have. It's just something that I'm saying is uh, a nice option to have. Um, many times when I'm doing some blending here on these mountains in particular, I, I use the or hold down the shift key and that gives me a very soft blending. And it also gives me that ability to go back and forth creating a, a horizon line or maybe the edge of a a lake if I'm doing something uh, like that. 
So that's just a straight, gives you a nice straight blend. Okay. Karen, I'm, I'm not sure if you mentioned this, but you probably did. Where does your inspiration for the subject come from? You do a lot of landscapes. Well, you know, to be honest with you, I, I do use reference image um, a lot of times, but my favorite way of working, and I'm, I'm actually going to show you that, is I like to work from texture and develop a painting right out of my imagination. And I'll, I'll actually show you in just a second here how I work uh, typically. Um, so I, you know, I find that um, <clears throat> I have to have that balance between working with uh, photo reference and just, and also giving myself that chance to use my own imagination, uh, work on my skill set, and be able to pull things out of nothing. And that's what I'm going to show you. <laughs> um, okay, great. It's, uh, it's the way I enjoy working the most. Um, I think that there's, there's definitely a place for reference. Um, it's very important. But I also feel that it can be uh, a crutch as well. So you have to be able to do it both ways. You have to be able to say, you know, I love this photograph. I'd love to paint something from it. Well, that's okay, but don't get yourself to the point where you're 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 getting slavish with it, and it's the only way. Because uh, you have to allow yourself to really uh, grow as an artist and be able to um, uh, advance your own skill set and not depend totally on. Um, on imagery all the time. It gives you a chance to uh, be creative, uh, to go into a world that you're that's unknown to you and helps you to find something in that world that um, makes you happy. So we'll we'll go there in a second. How big right. is the canvas you're working on? Oh, this is very small. This is only a thousand by a thousand at three hundred. Uh, only because I want to be able to show you uh, as an example. So it's 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 uh, this this particular canvas is just a practice canvas. So um, and it makes sense because I know things slow down when you're painting via GoToWebinar. Yes, they do. <laughs> yeah. But so far, it's so it's 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 okay. It's working all right. All right, so now let's move into creating some of that texture within these mountains. So what I'll do here is uh, look for a, I'm going to go with a real dark color here to do the background or the back side of the mountains. And we're going to now move over to the thick paint mountains. I think we'll start with that. Now, when you first start your brush strokes, um, we're going to make sure we're back up to 100% on the reset. And I'm going to just start uh, seeing what happens here as I start with this texture. And you can see what I mean by serendipity. You have to let go of some of the control that you normally have with a, uh, a brush that uh, is more is more flat and doesn't have a lot of texture involved in it. So you can see right now that I'm getting these you know different kind of textures that are starting to come through. Um, if I want more texture, then it's important that I bring the contrast down. And you, you see right now I'm starting to get more of that texture coming through. And then as, as I bring the contrast up higher, you can see that we're starting to get another kind of texture coming through. So this is why I say work with the angle, change it constantly, because every time you change the angle here, you're going to get something different coming in. And all of a sudden, these mountains start to take on 
a different look. I like to flip to another texture, try something different. And get in there and dig into your mountains and just see what happens. So this is what I'm talking about in terms of control. You have to let go a little bit of that. I'm going to bring the brightness up a bit. And I'm going to take this contrast down. So it's almost as if you're raising and lowering the, the height of the texture as you're working just with the paper panel, OK? So as I bring the contrast down, you can see that a lot more paint is going to come in. See that? As I bring that contrast up, these mountains of texture start to rise up, and there's more texture being imparted from the brush. So you kind of have to find that happy spot where uh, it's you know it works for you, and then flip to another texture, and keep digging in and and seeing what happens. Let's move, um, I'm gonna move over to a different brush here too. This is a pastel blender. Now, if you work with the pastel, uh, the pastel blender that was that's in the KB pastels that I was telling you about at the beginning of the webinar, if you go to the advanced brush controls, let me show you this. Let me bring it over here. Oh boy, it is, here, come out. All right, so if we go to the general brush controls here and we go to the uh, angle, you'll notice that, uh, let me do the dab preview here. Uh, let me go to Pastel Blender. Now, take a look at how flat that brush is. It's, it's really kind of a, a palette knife effect that we've got here. But if I wanted this brush to be rounder, then if I take the squeeze option and bring it up, you can see that it's going to be, uh, it's going to change the shape of the brush. So that's all this is here. It's just taking that brush, changing the basic squeeze setting uh, of that brush to, to give it a more round look instead of the uh, default uh, look that it was before, you know, more of a palette knife effect. So I'm going to go in here now and start working with this brush. And by the way, you can use any brush. Um, you know, uh, thick paint, it works beautiful with this. So you can play with your thick paint brushes and get some beautiful effects. Laura is wondering how much time you spend blending versus painting. She finds herself blending too much. Uh, well, I do spend a lot of time blending as well. In fact, I blend and then I paint and I blend and I paint. Um, I think there's just, you know, finding that point where um, if you go too far uh, with blending, you know, you start to lose some of the detail that you're, you know, trying to create in the painting. So. But blending has many, many uh, great attributes, too, as you're working. You know, one of the things that I love working, uh, you know, blending is creating atmosphere around the painting, around the elements that you're painting. So I tend to blend quite a bit. And see, see how this is all start. Look at, see how the... Um, concave effects and the the shapes are starting to really form here. And so you have to, you know, even if you have never painted mountains before, you know, bring up a reference image uh, just so you have an idea of, uh, you know, how mountains look and um, you're able to 
remember to that usually your mountains will have a light side and a dark side and you want to make sure that you get that in there And now let's just, um, <clears throat> let's go with some snow. Um, <clears throat> Dakota is following along with you and mm -hmm. she said that her squeeze setting is grayed out for the brush that you're using right now. The pastel blender. <clears throat> Just want to make sure, Dakota, that you're using the pastel blender round brush. I'll wait and see what she says. Hold on one second. It always goes when you're you forget to move your telephone out of the uh, office and it goes off when you don't want it to. Um, so yeah, uh, Dakota, get with me after the session and it's possible that something's uh, not right in the setting and I can help you with that. So feel free to reach out to me and I'll help you with that, not a problem. But it shouldn't be grayed out. Uh, you should have that ability to uh, get that squeeze going in that brush. Okay, so let's just put some, you know, maybe the look of some snow up on the tops of these mountains now. And again, it's just a matter of changing, you know, going to different paper textures, seeing what you get as you start to add that beautiful snow. Try different brush sizes as well. So you wanna be able to cover certain parts of the painting in the mountains. I use my alt key quite a bit to sample uh, the colors that are around the scene. And so that keeps me from having to, you know, go to the, uh, some of the other palettes all the time for color. And this, these brushes, again, are real sensitive to uh, pressure, uh, stylus pressure. So if you do apply firmer pressure, you'll get more color coming through and light pressure, more of a blending. Now I'm going to go back to the pastel blender brush here. I'm going to reset it to default. And I'm just going to do a little bit of edging along the sides here. And honestly, this is just kind of how you get started with uh, these mountains. And keep in mind that you can always um, create other things as well you know uh, beautiful trunks of trees rocks um, and i'm going to take the uh, reset down to zero here i'm going to go back down to that sandpaper brush here and then i'm just going to do a little bit of blending here. I again hold that shift key down to get that nice straight blending coming through. Okay. And I you know, like I say, when I get started with these mountains, I end up spending quite a bit of time, you know, finessing them, working into them. Um, the other brush I like using here is the frozen brush. This brush originally um, is in app with Corel. It's called the Snow Brushes. And it originally was for creating uh, the look of frozen 
um, frozen icicles and things like that. And what I've ended up using it for quite a bit is to just finesse the end of the painting in terms of the mountaintops. So if I need highlights in certain spots, you can see it's kind of a, it breaks up, really a fun brush to use. It kind of breaks in the little brush strokes as it goes along. So highly textural, another reason I like it so much. And then I also will use it for, um, you can see how it breaks up the, the brush stroke, so it's very highly textured. I like to also use it for, for tree trunks and for creating trees, so it's really a beautiful brush for that. So I oftentimes will find uh, different uses for brushes that were intentionally meant for something other than what I actually use them for, so um, that happens to me quite a bit. Um, so that's frozen. Uh, again, with a pastel blender, I just like going in and just creating a little bit of soft edges. And finally, you know, like I say, I would probably keep going into these, developing all the high areas, the low areas, the lights, the darks. Um, there's a brush that's kind of fun to use called the pinch brush, um, where if you're looking to define a mountain edge, for example, you can use it just to create a definition along an edge. And so it can be sometimes a nice brush to use just as a finishing touch for extra detail. Uh, sometimes I even use it along the shoreline uh, to create those different levels of shoreline and um, it works really great for creating waves in the ocean as well. So always finding ways to use brushes uh, in different ways. Uh, soft screen is a default brush that you'll find in the glazing brush category. And um, I'm thinking that it might be fun just to maybe put a nice glow up here in the background. So we'll set this to uh, overlay blend mode and maybe add just a nice bright light coming through here. Okay. And so though that's the basics of working with uh, the Mountain Majesty. So again, it's a matter of working with the scale, working with your, your contrast and brightness, remembering that as you bring your contrast down, you'll get more of, um, you know, more of the brush stroke coming out, a little less texture. And then as you raise it up higher, uh, keeping your brightness at this point, and then your contrast, as you raise that up, you'll start getting more texture in the, in the actual brush stroke. So that is the basics of working with it. Um, now, what I'd like to do now, um, if time permits, are we still, we're still good on time. Yeah, we're great. And what oh, you're great. doing here looks amazing. Um, I'm gonna- Everybody is so quiet, Karen. You must uh, be answering outside of that squeeze issue. Um, there's no other questions right now. Okay, yeah. And I'll get back to um, Dakota on that one. Uh, this one, this I just wanted to show you real quick because this is, again, just an example of where you can go with these textures. Now, this one took me longer to work with because I just, I got so engrossed in it that I just kept going and going and going with it. Um, the brushes that I used for the clouds are the Puffy Fairweather. Um, which is uh, in the clouds brush category, and that's also in app with uh, Corel Painter. So it's called Puffy Fairweather, and it is uh, just one of my favorite cloud brushes ever. So it, it not only, uh, when you put firm pressure on the brush, you get lots of saturation, 
and then soft pressure it just blends out on the edges just just beautifully so it's a, a wonderful brush to use for clouds and the rest of this was done uh, simply with uh, I did some thick paint here um, just the default thick paint brushes so experiment with that um, there was uh, some use of the pastel blender uh, the two inch landscape brush which I think a lot of my students have that brush um, it's just an all-purpose kind of uh, landscape brush from the original Bob Ross uh, brush pack. And um, so this one was a lot of fun to create. And I'll go. This one, again, is another example of working with the nothing but those uh, paper textures. So I'll bring them back in here so you can see them. So Mountain Majesty, this was all done by just moving around the to different papers changing the settings changing the scale changing the contrast and just experimenting and seeing what I got and uh, this one was all done with um, a pastel blender I think I did the whole thing with this so uh, that was a fun one to create and that's the one we just did and this is another uh, opening image, you know, again, lots of texture. You know, this is different, a whole different approach, but again, just done with the Mountain Majesty. Uh, this one is just one that I started playing around with, again, just developing the mountains with the papers. Uh, the tree here I did with the frozen brush. So you can see again how um, beautifully intricate that brush can be as far as uh, creating those beautiful limbs and branches. So it's a very delicate brush, but does some beautiful um, kind of organic looking um, branches and limbs. And this is just another example of getting started uh, oftentimes um, on our community at DAA, uh, DAA community, um, dot com, where I have my community group, there are a couple of artists in there, George Ireland and Lisa James, who do beautiful painted backgrounds. And I love working with backgrounds, and this happens to be one of the backgrounds that I started with. And again, that would be just file placing that beautiful texture on a layer, uh, creating my sketch, which I started here. And I obviously haven't finished this painting, but, and then I started working with the mountains majesty to create the, the mountains and um, started putting in some little areas of trees. And I'm just working from the back and working forward. So this is one of the ways that I uh, really enjoy enjoy painting. So um, what I want to do now is I'm going to open up a file here. Um, let's see, I think this is on my desktop. Karen? Yeah. Um, there's a couple questions coming in. The brushes that you're referring to that are in app, those are the ones that um, you have created that are for sale. They're not. Yes, those great. are uh, Corel brushes that I've created for for Corel. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to clarify that for everybody. And um, there's also a couple questions about the texture overlays and whether or not you are using a particular merge mode with those? Yes, I am. Okay. <laughs> and, I, and I'll talk to you about how I work that way. Because okay. um, if I have time, I want to show you a little tip about working with uh, different ways of working with te texture as well, as well. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to do something drastic here, but I want to show you how this works and hopefully I can get this to yeah that isn't what I want so I'm going to approach it this way I'm going to 
pick up this beautiful texture here. And I'm going to change the size of this a little bit because I don't want to slow down um, a painter while we're online here. So I'm still going to work at a uh, high resolution, but I'm just going to bring this down to a more reasonable size for webinar viewing. And I'm going to go to the canvas and I'll rotate this 90 degrees. And this is where um, my happy place is when I start to paint. Um, I like working with textures, these type of uh, painted, painted backgrounds. And what I like to do is, is be able to see things, uh, visually see shapes and forms within the texture that I can start a painting uh, using those particular shapes. And what I see right off the bat here is uh, an, a tree emerging in this area here. So I'm going to move over to a brush called Evergreens. This one happens to be in my brush shop in the um, fall trees brush category. So a lot of you have this one already. Uh, it's Evergreens. And I'm going to sample using my Alt key this color that I see right here. And holding the shift key down, I'm just going to create kind of the effect of a straight line here that looks like a, a tree trunk, all right? And I'm just going to use this brush now. Uh, let me check my settings here. This is rotation, yes. And I'm just going to build the shape of a tree. And this is the way I start painting quite often because I like to give myself a chance just to uh, experience and find what I see in the textures and develop it. So it doesn't have to be anything real fancy at this point. It's just getting in some basic shapes. I look over here and I sample this color and I say, oh, I can bring out something over in this area too, which is another tree on a cliffside perhaps. And I'm always, again, sampling color Here's a tree, maybe right in here, that's again in the background. So a lot of times this is just how I start. And I see things where I can develop shape and form and create strong atmosphere because that's something that I always like to have in my paintings is a good atmosphere going on. Maybe just sampling some of this color and building up on the look of shrubs and undergrowth along a cliff line here. I love these webinars too, Tanya, because I'm so busy most of the time with the classes and students that sometimes I don't get enough chances to just paint. So it's nice. <laughs> well, we are all enjoying this. <laughs> and while you're painting, it, it's a little premature, but I want to mention that we're going to be having a global art contest um, come, I think it's opening up January 19th next year for Painter. Awesome. And we'll have up to $20,000 in prizes. So oh my yeah, <laughs> um, so we're, we have it in the works right now. We're putting it together for you guys and it's, 
something to look forward to next year. We have never done this before. So oh, that sounds great. It will be exciting. There's so, so many great painters out there. Our students, even at DAA, are just every year. I, I love looking at how um, every year they just get better and better. And I think they all know what it takes now to aspire to be uh, great with painter. Lots of practice. It never ends. And, you know, I see, because we do have little mini contests and Discovery Center every once in a while, and right. I have seen such a progression from some of your students, Karen, Isn't year over year. Yes, I can tell the difference on how much they practiced and worked at it. So it definitely makes a difference to keep at it. Absolutely. It's fun, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Painter is fun. OK, um, so now let's just Let's just put in some nice, uh, you know, feeling of some maybe rocky, rocky cliffs down here. Let's see, move this up a little bit. And again, now I'm working with uh, paper texture. And it would help if I had my reset up. So here we go. We start getting some cliffs coming in here. And again, it's uh, you just never know what you're going to get. But a lot of times it just turns out just the way it should. I love this back here. Maybe add a little more texture and give that look of a of a cliff side coming down some snow maybe And we'll move over to Pastel Blender. Remember, when you're blending with this brush, that sandpaper is just a really good one. Reset zero, shift key down for that nice straight blending. Okay. And this was real quick and real simple, but I think it gives you an idea of some of the places and you can go with these paper textures and have some fun. OK. <laughs> now, um, the next thing I want to show you here real quick before we close. Um, I'm going to do a file place and let's see. I have that here. I don't think I do. Let me go into my papers. My Debbie, who is my assistant, has helped me tremendously in um, learning to keep my many, many resources intact <laughs> and organized, <laughs> which that I have not here. <laughs> it's so difficult. <laughs> I'm not good at organizing, but I'm learning, <laughs> which I know she is, uh, she is very happy about. So this is a painted background. As you can see, it's kind of highly textured. Um, and it is one of the things that I really like doing at the end of the painting where I apply this particular overlay to the finished painting. 
And to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and change this composite method. Now, there's a couple of things you can do. Uh, you can try methods like overlay, screen, and multiply. This happens to be multiply. And then when you bring the opacity down, you can see that uh, you can control that and, and still have that feeling of a painted background where you get this high textural effect, but the actual painting is still coming through. Um, there are times also where I'll add a layer mask here and do a little masking out where you know there might be parts of the painting where I don't necessarily want texture and uh, I would just go ahead and minimize that. And then finally, I'm, uh, I'm gonna save this one just real quick here. And then I'll delete this because I want to show you one final thing here. I'm going to change that composite method to overlay on that texture. And I'm just going to lock it so I don't paint on it. But um, here is another way that you can evoke uh, texture into your paint strokes. Um, I'll pick up, um, let's see, I'll just pick up this two inch landscape brush here, make it a little bit bigger here so you can see this. But when I start to paint, um, notice that I am getting, oh, wait a minute. This might not be the best one to pick. Yeah, that should be working. Let me try the cell blender instead. It might be because of the color I'm using too. I don't know. All right, you probably can't see this. Oh, I know why. I didn't have the texture up high enough. There we go. All right, so oh, uh, set to overlay composite method. Um, opacity all the way up. You can lower it as you work this way. New layer and watch when I paint now. Notice how the texture is coming through in the brush stroke. So that's another fun way that you can work with texture uh, with Painter. I'll zoom in nice and close so you can see this. Now I'll Close the texture layer so you can see the difference. So that's flat paint, and then that's with your texture. So you can control that again. If you want that to be a little less texture, just bring your opacity down until you find the sweet spot and you like what, you, what you're getting. Works really nice for chalk, pencils, um, and as a really fun way to uh, additionally work with texture, okay? So I just wanted to throw that in for you. Um, I think that's uh, about it, uh, Tanya, unless you have time for me to show the, the um, uh, snowflake brush. <laughs> Well, of course we have time. Um, I just wanted to mention, so there were, now you have people so interested in all these brushes, and I know that you had mentioned a couple brushes that were from additional packs. I don't know if maybe you could summarize for me and I could let people know what packs they might want to Purchase. Yeah, um, I can do that really quick for you. Um, okay. the, fr the frozen brush, uh, the one that I really like using for um, for uh, branches and limbs and things like that, really nice brush, is in the snow brush category, and that is in-app with Painter Corel. So you'll get that on the welcome screen. Um, the evergreens that I used for the trees uh, is in the fall uh, trees brush category on the brush shop on digitalartacademy.com. 
There's also one that I use quite often called random branches, and it is uh, a tree uh, for tree, tree branches. It's kind of a, a dab type of brush. That's also in the fall trees. Uh, Puffy Fairweather, the cloud brush, is in the clouds brush category, and that is in-app on the welcome screen as well in the, in the brush store for Corel. And there's lots of uh, brushes on, um, you know, the website, Di Digital Art Academy and the brush shop that you can, there's videos that will show you how to work with those brushes. So if there's any there that you like, you can check those out. Okay, That's thank the, you so much. Yeah, hopefully and that helps. Yeah, and the textures that you're offering, um, the one that you showed at the very end, or just in general, the ones that you were using, are those in the... Um, those are uh, those those you would have to get uh, if you're a member of the DAA community site, and I'll show that to you here real quick. Okay. Um, and let me tell you guys, everyone that's in attendance here, it is so worth joining the community. There's so much valuable information, and you can have wonderful exchanges with the other members, and also Karen and Skip, and I highly recommend it if you have not checked it out. So if you're not a member, just request to join here and um, I'll review your uh, request. And, um, you know, we like people to come into the community that are going to really be active and um, be supportive of the group. So it's a it's a real special group. So uh, I hope you will check it out. It's a you know, great place to, to learn painter and to um, get inspired because there are some amazing artists in this in this community that uh, will really, really inspire you. So um, there is a topic there where we have uh, brushes and goodies to share. And usually you'll find all the free freebies in that particular uh, section uh, topic, okay? Great. All right, so I wanted to show you really quickly two ways that you can create these brushes. These are just fun, fun brushes uh, to work with. Um, I'm gonna go down to my little brush category that I added here called, is this it, Snow? Nope, KB Winter Wonderland. And uh, this one, when you're going to create a brush, um, a lot of times it's great to start with a brush with the attributes that you want to impart into that brush. So if you're going to do a snowflake brush, look for something in maybe the airbrush section where you have a splatter brush, uh, something that um, you know really is flowing and has a lot of separation. So you don't have to do too much legwork to, to get what you're looking for. But this little snowflake here was done using the uh, mirror painting tool and the um, kaleidoscope, all right? So I'm gonna close this real quick here and come down. A good brush to start off uh, with would be, um, you know, something like your pens. Uh, let's see get into my pins and that good old flat color brush. And uh, you wanna use black when you start off with a, creating your first brush dab. And um, I like, let's see, I am working in the kaleidoscope tool and I'm going to create segments here. And so I'm gonna go up pretty high to around nine. And I'm just gonna start right in the middle and start with a little design, thinking about snowflakes and what they look like. And every snowflake is different, of course, but then maybe we end up with something just simple. like that, okay? 
and we'll go ahead and, you know, the shortcut to the uh, mirror painting is the tilde key, which is right above the tab key on your um, keyboard. And so it's a real quick way to uh, get to mirror painting real quickly. Now, I want to impart this particular uh, um, brush dab to a brush that I've already created in the Winter Wonderland, and it's called uh, the uh, Snow Flurry brush here. And so this brush has all the built-in uh, attributes that I'm looking for for this particular um, brush. So I'm going to go over to my rectangular selection tool and make a selection around the brush stroke. Come back over to my brush tool, select the brush, capture dab, and uh, let me get my advanced brush controls up. So I should have done that first. And there is my dab. So I can see what it looks like under the dab preview here. Now, Command D or Control D will remove the marching ants. And let me clear this out so I can paint with it and see what it looks like. And so I've got this really cute little uh, um, snowflake brush dab. And this is just, these are just a lot of fun to work with. Um, I'll open up one little file here and kind of show you um, what I've done here. I'm just gonna go down to this one. I like this KB. This is the same process again. I'll add a layer and just paint with white. And you can see that I paint in some little snowflakes and it just kind of adds a little uh, holiday festivity to illustrations or if you're making greeting cards, it's a, it's a great way to, um, uh, to create a dab, uh, especially if you're looking for a snowflake shape. Okay. So you can have fun with that as well. Karen, right, that is on. so cute. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love it. It's, they're a lot of fun, a lot of fun to uh, create. I, I go crazy with, you know me, I love creating brushes and uh, that would probably be my second most favorite thing in painter is creating brushes. So uh, there's just no end to some of the ways and techniques that you can create brushes in painter. So getting better all the time too. <laughs> <laughs> well, tons of compliments in the panel here. I know you can't see the, the panel, but um, everybody really enjoyed this. And I didn't mention at the beginning that we did record this. So you will receive the link to the recording. Um, I promise last time the follow-up went out without a link. This time it will not. Um, and hope, I think we addressed everybody's questions as well. So overall, amazing job, Karen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And, and happy holidays to everybody. And here's looking to 2021, which has just got to be a better year than this one was. <laughs> For sure. It will be. <laughs> All right, well, everybody. Thanks a lot, everybody. Enjoy your weekend. And um, we don't have a webinar in January, but we will have one in February, and we'll let you know about it. All right. Take care. Thanks again, Karen. Bye. Take care, everybody, and thank you. Okay. Bye.